What about road safety? Been waiting all day for this. Someone at the table that's got the handle on the budget figures for road safety. Yes, so while you're coming up, we see that uh, the budget amount was twenty-four million and sixty-eight thousand, uh, and we only spent twenty-three million and four hundred and two. Uh, you agree with those figures? Uh, I'm sorry, Senator. What program are you actually referring to? Program 2.3, road safety expense, in the budget statements. Are you familiar with? Am I missing something? PBS expenses, last budget, 2016-17, page 31. Oh, page 31. Thank you, Senator. 23 million 402 was spent. And you budgeted 24 and 68. Now, in an environment where we lose 1,300 Australians to death in a year and 8,000 plus seriously injured, how is it possible that we can't even spend the money allocated for road safety programs? I'm sorry, Senator. I, I, I hesitate. I, I just can't um, see what it is that you're referring to. I apologise. I'm obviously not quick at this hour. Have you got the budget statement? I've got the PBS in front of me, Senator. Okay. You said well, page 31. Well, my extract here is saying that the um, program 2.3 road safety. So 2.3, maybe I'm on the wrong. Road safety expense was budgeted for 24 million and 68,000. My apologies, Senator. I'm and in this budget, we see that 23 million and 402 was actually spent. Yeah. So someone's taken the budgets in my office and compared what you wanted to spend and what you actually spent. And my point is, you have 666,000 underspent, while 1,300 Australians lost their lives, over 8,000 seriously injured and hospitalised. You can't get the allocation to road safety spent. The pitiful, in my words, not anybody else's, allocation to road safety, you can't even spend it. Can you give me any, a reason for that? So, um, Senator, I'm conscious that you're referring to um, departmental um, expenses in that regard, um, and it may actually also relate. So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not actually going to be able to answer your question in detail. Okay. I would expect it actually in some way relates to um, the way in which we work with the states and territories in distributing funding. But I'll need to take that on notice well, my, and come my, back my, to you. I apologise. My overriding theme is there is a very low allocation in the budget to road safety despite the fact we lose 1,300 Australian lives each year and 8,000 plus injuries, and we do not even expend that miserly allocation. That's my point. And my figures that my staff have produced are that we underspent 666,000 in, um, in, um, in the actual calendar year we're in. And if we look at um, the Ford estimates, uh, which were 1718, which didn't have a commitment for key to drive, which is another absolute disgrace. It didn't have it in the initial. However, you did find the money. Um, it looks like you're going to uh, underspend again. So, Senator, the so so the two points I'm put to you: 666, 1617, and then if we look forward, you're going to underspend 866 in 1718. I, I, I don't understand a department that doesn't prioritise road safety. And I don't understand why allocated figures can't be spent when there are any number of state and territory programs crying out for funding to you know, alleviate 1,300 deaths and 8,000 plus serious injuries. I just don't understand how you can you know, get to the stage where you don't even get the money you've allocated onto the table. And I would argue that it's a miserly amount anyway. So I'd like on notice why that is. Certainly and if you look forward to 1819, it looks like you're budgeting 993,000 less. So I would characterise the underspend and the lack of forward spend as you know, a complete abrogation of your responsibility in terms of road safety. I don't see any evidence that you're determined to spend your allocated funds on a vital piece of spend for, you know, 1,300 dead, 8,000 injured, and we're not even spending the money we allocate. 
I would like someone to address that. And if uh, I'm happy for you to take it on notice, because I do want a considered response. Now, does it mean that you're bereft of ideas, that you have no new safety programs? That's a rhetorical question. But if you can't spend the money you're allocated, you could draw the conclusion that you don't have any initiatives and you don't have any new ideas. And I find that uh, quite surprising. Well, that's certainly not the case. No. The Minister, in his budget statement, made clear a number of new initiatives which are being as part of the National Road Safety Strategy, including uh, three key areas that he's now uh, leading work on on behalf of all the jurisdictions. Firstly, distractions, uh, particularly mobile phone and electronic device distractions. Uh, secondly, uh, drug testing, roadside drug testing. And thirdly, uh, how to better utilise the roads to recovery funding with a safety focus. Okay. So, so if the Secretary of the Department can articulate what is going on, why can't the officials or the officers responsible for the... Um, Senator, you know, very happy to give you information in relation to what we're doing on road safety. You know, um, I, I, my information of... required is why you don't even spend your funds. So, Senator, my concern is that I don't know the exact makeup of the figures that you are referring to. So, very happy to come back to you with that information. But if your question was, what are the activities that we are undertaking at the moment? As Mr Murdoch has just said, we have a number of activities that we're undertaking. Okay. Well, and in rather addition... than giving you an opportunity to belatedly blow your uh, trumpet in respect to what you're doing, I'll just go through this brief, which puts questions to you. And if we coincide and it gives you an opportunity to tell us what a wonderful job you're doing, good luck. So, if I can just, if I can just add there, I think it's pretty, um, pretty clear that we are doing a wonderful job, as you say. Um, I mean, we even had the discussion yesterday about, clearly, about the separation on the Bruce Highway, which you indicated was obviously very positive. I think it was you. It might have been one of the other senators. I mean, the minister has been very clear that road safety is an absolute priority for him. So I would hate anybody from the, the questioning that are coming to, to take any other indication than that was the case. Okay. And, and I accept that the Minister is very clear about road safety being a priority. Mm -hmm. But what this estimates process is about is putting the money where the mouth is. Right. And my Absolutely contention so, is, right. my contention is, and I'm happy to be proved wrong, that you can't even get your allocated yeah. funds on the table. And, and uh, appreciate your question, Senator, but I just didn't want it to be less than clear how committed the Minister is to road safety. Yes, as the co-founder of the Parliamentary Friends of Road Safety, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> Good, I'm glad we've got that clear, Senator. Now, oh. in, in terms of our um, reducing road deaths by 30 per cent on 2008-10 figures by 2020, how are we tracking on that? Senator, that's been an area that's been of real concern to the Minister, uh, and I, I know you are yourself also aware that we've had a recent um, change in the uh, trends in relation to road deaths. Um, in particular, we have gone from a situation where we had achieved almost 18 per cent um, against that, that 30 um, uh, in relation to the target that we had set. More recently, our figures have actually deteriorated down to only 9% um, as against that 30. Uh, it's for we're not on track to meet that. We're considerably behind. And, and therefore, to make sure that we do act on that, the, some of the um, initiatives Mr Murdoch mentioned uh, were consider, uh, are actually actions that we're undertaking at the moment. So, and uh, the minister is also doing that, of course, in conjunction with all of the state and territory ministers from around the country. When the Transport and Infrastructure Council met on Friday, they were some of the key items that they were actually considering, and they have um, supported and endorsed Minister Chester's uh, actions in relation to not only what we can do in relation to drug testing, to be able to make it cheaper, to be able to undertake more at the, the roadside um, so that we can um, actually uh, catch more people in that regard, but also in relation to distraction, so issues such as what's the true impact of um, people using mobile phones in their cars, what can we do about that, how can we stop that happening. It's happening at a much, um, it is at an increased rate as well, just like uh, the use of drugs um, by drivers, that's increasing significantly as well. 
So they're two of the key activities, and, and you're right, Senator, in particular, the ministers have been focused on what is it that they haven't actually tried to, um, uh, tried to undertake previously, so what's new that we haven't actually tried already. In addition, um, there's also other work going on in relation to reviewing the actions of the National Road Safety Strategy with all of the um, transport ministers from around the country as well. Okay. Now, I'm on the public record of saying there's a couple of things, some really low-hanging fruit that the federal government could do in respect to improving our road toll. And one of those things, now that we're no longer going to manufacture motor vehicles in this country, is mandating standards of safety exactly the same as the European Union or the United States. Where is the difficulty with mandating autonomous braking technology uh, lane keep assist on imported vehicles. So, Senator, um, there are a range of um, activities going on in the under the, the National Road Safety Strategy in relation to looking at our Australian design rules and making sure that they are harmonised with uh, European standards, other international standards in that regard. Um, uh, off the top of my head, at the moment, we still have 13 standards in our ADRs that are not harmonised. A number of those are actually where we have Australian-only standards. So an example of that is road trains with trucks. But we still have a number of them that could be harmonised. And there are a number of uh, regulatory impact statements underway at the moment um, to actually um, address uh, the, the differences that we have. Obviously, um, as you pointed out, the change in manufacture in Australia will, um, uh, is one issue for us, the change in environment in the automotive sector. Um, however, the issue is also still the impact of that on consumers as well, and therefore the regulatory impact statement will actually assess um, the uh, benefits that we get from a road safety perspective as well as the costs um, to the consumer. And having done that work, we can present that to government. Well, you know, this, this committee has taken evidence that cars manufactured in Malaysia or Thailand for the European Union or the United States are specced at a higher environmental and safety standard, but the same car, when it's headed this way, is despecced. Now, that would appear to be quite an obvious area that the Australian government could act in. I mean, put simply, the technology is not expensive when you're making a million cars a year which these plants are making. Now, left to its own devices, the marketplace is selling cars that can reverse into a parking spot. Well, that's wonderful, but I would prefer a car that's sold that doesn't run into the car in front of it, because that would make more sense to me. Actually, being old fashioned, if you can't park your car, you shouldn't be driving it forward. But the marketplace is advertising technology to park a vehicle without assistance from the driver, and yet the technology is the same that stopped you running into someone, a pedestrian, an elderly person, or the car in front of you. And we are absent at the wheel in this respect. We could change the manufacturing environment for Australia at the you know, stroke of the minister's pen. And probably we'd make Asia a lot safer too, because they wouldn't stuff around, they would just make the same change for all motor vehicles sold in this part of the world. And I just do not understand how we can consistently drag the chain. When will we see autonomous braking technology and other life-saving technologies mandated on Australian cars? You should be the minister. Uh, Senator, I can't answer that question with a date at the moment. Can we say what the time frame is likely to be? Um, I don't see it being that far away. What I mean by that is that we are talking a, about a few years, but it does, the RIS process actually, sorry, the regulatory yeah. impact statement is a lengthy um, process. But uh, your concerns are you know, understood. I really get angry at this because, you know, there's media reports that say this. In Berlin, the truck that ran over people in that terrorist attack had autonomous braking technology and didn't achieve as many people as were run over in Nice, which didn't have it. Now, if the truck, the car that went up Burke Street Mall had autonomous braking technology on it, it wouldn't have achieved the result it did. I mean, we cannot simply drag the chain on this. You can't argue in 
pretty powerful. I, I think we agree very strongly with you, Senator. I think the, the critical points at the moment are there is nothing to preclude manufacturers bringing that into the market. Your point about mandatory, we would agree. The process is underway to start that, as Ms Silk has indicated. We will do that as expeditiously as possible. The most important thing we've been focused on is to remove any impediments to that technology. And you, as you know, there were impediments in the past to some of that technology coming in through ADRs. That's no longer the case. And Senator, I'm sorry, I, I should have also mentioned um, the work that we're doing with ANCAP. Whilst I appreciate, appreciate it's voluntary, not mandated, um, the work that we do with ANCAP in relation to the five-star safety system as well. Um, one of the other initiatives that uh, ministers have agreed to is ensuring that we raise um, knowledge in relation to the five-star safety rating and trying to get a greater understanding of that so that when consumers are purchasing cars, they're actually making choices in relation to those safety requirements as well. Okay. Now, I understand that Minister Chester has uh, issued a media release uh, stating the government will be conducting an inquiry into national road safety strategy. Is this different to the Osroads review of national road safe strategy? Is this? It's in yes. A, a, it's yes, different. Senator. It's a, Minister uh, agreed with his state colleagues to us appoint a, an expert panel to review our progress on the national road safety strategy. Uh, that that will be done as an additional review with advice coming back to ministers. Uh, as soon as possible this year. Will we get terms of reference published? Uh, that would be my expectation, Senator, yes. What and, uh, resources will this new inquiry entail? Uh, it'll be supported by our department uh, and the state jurisdictions as appropriate. Is it'll there any be, new no, money? Or no, is it... no, Senator, it'll be, form, be from within existing departmental resources. A productivity report into police service revealed that hospitalisations from road crashes are up 8% over the last five years. And I mean, despite the tragedy of deaths, they're quantifiable and payable. Mm -hmm. But injuries are, are a serious liability in every jurisdiction, and some of them are almost unquantifiable in terms of the cost to emergency services and then the ongoing care. Uh, and, and also the ongoing trauma to, uh, to the people who are seriously injured, as, and we're seeing that with, with what become a uh, whole rest of life very serious medical conditions. So, so I, I, what are you doing to fix this problem if there's technology as simple as autonomous braking technology, which in a low impact crash will stop you from killing a pedestrian or mm. knocking them over at a public, uh, you know, at a, a crossing? Well, well, as Ms Zilk has indicated, we are moving in relation to mandatory for those type of braking systems, but at the same time, trying to maximise the, the voluntary provision into the market of those technologies. I think your point's a very important one. Uh, the vehicle manufacturers, where are their commercial marketing focus? Exactly. And, and uh, as I said, we've been very focused on removing impediments which, mean, which preclude that technology. The next stage is mandatory uh, requirements for that technology. That obviously takes some time to work through a fleet. Uh, there are about a million cars a year, new, new cars sold in the Australian market. Uh, it takes about 10 to 12 years to, for the fleet, to, for that technology to move through the fleet. Okay. Uh, but we do... Just, just before you go, uh, we're contemplating working through Smoko and tacking yeah. it on the end. I haven't got a lot of gas. Oh, but I just want to check. Are you guys right to keep going? Sure. OK, thank you. We're just going to go through Smoko. And... So, yeah, so I, I, I get that, but is there any increase in the budget to address this issue? Uh, not I mean, I'm lighting, highlighting you've got a declining spend. The one you had before. The, 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 the work is ongoing. It's being funded. Work such as the ADR changes are being resourced within the department. Now, go back to the old identification plate fee. Where does that go in the budget these days? I mean, it used to be a, a fee per imported vehicle. Was it $6? Um, Still is, And, and, and it, it used to be dedicated to road safety. But I don't see it anymore. Where does it go? Does it just go into general revenue? Senator, it's actually part of the um, process to... Um, so those dollars are recovered. They actually pay for um, uh, the branch within our department that actually administers the Motor Vehicle Standards Act and therefore does the work on, on um, ADRs. 
you might be familiar with the fact that there's a review of um, that Motor Vehicle Standards Act that's been undertaken um, over the last 18 months and pen. new legislation is being worked on at the moment. The reason I mention that is because it's an opportunity, therefore, to um, consider the, uh, the cost um, in relation to administering um, that activity and making sure that the plate cost um, therefore reflects the true cost of actually providing that service okay. to industry but, but and last to consumers. I, last I heard, the, that, that particular um, department's focus was uh, ABS for, for motorcycles, and that was their priority. Now, as a, you know, probably, sh well, I, I attended a global forum for road safety legislators. They said, that's in place in India. ABS for motorcycles is in place for India. It's in place in multiple jurisdictions. Why don't you just pick it up and put it in Australia? Why are you doing your own assessment on proven technology with scarce resources? Uh, Senator, we're actually um, undertaking that work at the moment and close to completion um, in relation to but that activity. But why bother doing it if it's already proved in other jurisdictions? Uh, um, we have a requirement within government to undertake a regulatory impact statement where legislation is going to impact on industry and consumers. So okay. uh, I'm afraid it's a requirement that we have to work through. Okay. So I suppose my question would be then why would we pick ABS braking for motorcycles to be the preeminent issue that we spend scarce resources on? So, uh, Senator, that actually relates to the number of deaths that um, are actually um, occurring in motorcycles in Australia. One of the key growth areas in our deaths is actually motorcycles. So therefore, um, in our initial assessment, we try to look at which um, standards we should focus on first to make sure that we do maximise out the use of our I haven't resources. got my wallet with me. I've got an unlimited motorcycle licence and I haven't ridden a bike for 35 years. That's where you need to be looking, and not that, at ABS. Well, it's actually part of the activity. Um, Senator, I agree, and that was also discussed by the road safety ministers in recent meetings, is the need to make sure that those that are using motorbikes, um, that are, are generally returning to a motorbike in their retirement, for example, or their later years, and think they can still um, ride a motorbike, a high power vehicle without um, undertaking training again, that there is an issue in that. And therefore, uh, we're working with the states and territories in making sure that that's actually um, information that goes out to motorcycle drivers to encourage them to actually undertake more training and refresh their skills. Okay, it's common sense. But, but look, you know, I, I apologise for getting a bit uh, agitated about this stuff, but we really need to do better in this area. And if we can't spend the meagre funds that are allocated and there are no re new resources and it appears as if there is no proactive, um, world-leading challenges taken up by our road safety people in the Federal Department, I think it needs a shake-up. I mean, we really do have committed people in networks all over the world swapping ideas about what is going on and what is best for you know, uh, road safety uh, outcomes, yeah. and, and we're dragging the chain, in my view. We're actually very fortunate with some of the individuals we have in Australia, Senator, and the roles that they play in the various UN committees in that regard. Um, in particular, we had experts um, from around the country report to ministers at, uh, at, at those meetings on the activities, and in fact, one of the um, attendees was actually the leader of one of the UN committees. So we are very lucky in that regard. Okay. Can I just finally ask, what is the, um, the department doing, doing to make roads safer for those, uh, uh, those people whose uh, workplaces are public roads? And I mean uh, uh, drivers, bus drivers, taxi drivers, whoever. Those people that earn their living on the roads, can you give us a summation of what you're doing to make um, their lives better? Because too many of them are reflected in the casualties and the injuries in our road safety statistics. Um, Senator, I suppose at, our, at the Commonwealth level, the key contribution there is in relation to um, investment in the infrastructure um, and making sure that, for example, for truck drivers, that we have road safety initiatives in place specifically for them. Uh, so that's one of our key activities. When it comes to buses, 
obviously the highways, um, those that are driving on highways are benefiting in that regard. But when it comes to um, city activities as well, it's in relation to the work that we're doing um, to assist with uh, planning of cities and basically the way in which the road networks uh, work. Osteroads is a... You know, the departments spend. But what I would like to put to you is that you could complement that effort by investigating, and Minister, if you could take it to uh, the Honourable Darren uh, Chester, uh, why can't we give these people greater protection by adopting tried and proven technologies in the United States and in the European Union? in respect to autonomous braking technology for heavy vehicles, in respect to autonomous braking technology for uh, lighter vehicles. You could really make the place safer and better at the administrative stroke of a pen. And I'd like to hear in detail the arguments why we can't move quicker than we are at the moment. Because, you know, I know the impediments before, but I also know this, that there are companies in Australia, maybe BHP, Rio and whatever, who are mandating five-star vehicles for all of their staff. The government's state and territory should be mandating five-star vehicles for every part of their fleet. You will then immediately affect that second-hand market. That's how you change the profile of my state, which has probably got the oldest vehicle fleet. And we do know, and NCAP is doing this now, they're getting an eight and 10 year old Toyota Corolla, crashing it and comparing it to a new one. Because people think, you know, child's going on the road, get them a second hand car. That one's, we don't want to put our most vulnerable road users in the unsafest vehicles. And, you know, I think we can move a lot quicker on this. So I'd like, uh, Minister, if you could get me an answer from the Honourable Darren Chester. I most certainly will, Senator, and I will convey all of that to him, and I will certainly undertake to specifically put that through on notice for you, Senator. I certainly you understand um, your frustration. I think we are all acutely aware of how much we need to focus on road safety. I spend, as you all do, um, an awful lot of my time on the road, so I'm as well aware of it, of it as, uh, as anyone. So thank, thank you.